welcome to this Sunday's garden video. Very exciting. If you saw, um, I had put up, I think it was like a, what are they called? A short or a reel on Instagram. They're all the same. A short little clip. The hedgehog is in residence. So this happened last year and someone actually explained it quite well and it makes sense. So August time or September. So when they have, when hedgehogs have babies, let's say, May, June, it could be time for some of the hogs to like leave the nest or maybe they've been kicked out of their group or whatever. So there can be solo hogs that go around. And cause this, there's one hedgehog, he's on his own. I've been watching him the past few days. And I said it to my neighbor cause he hadn't seen them in a while. And I showed him the hog in my garden and he, I was chatting to him yesterday and he said that he's seen him in his garden too, which is great. We love when we have hedgehog observations. So he has left out some food. I have some food as well, not too much because we want him to do his cleanup job in the garden. I don't think he's in there this morning. I did check before I went to yoga this morning. I was like, is he in? And um, he was there all day yesterday, but I'll insert clips of him like in the house. So delighted. The gate, um, a couple of videos back. I'll insert the little clip here as well. And um, put the hedgehog hole in the gate because I had planted up the right hand side border so I didn't want to block any you know entrances in the fence for him to get in so one side is fence where he can get in and one side is wall but the side that has the wall has the hole in the gate but it worked the hedgehog is able to get in he has found my garden once again and all is good in the world now yesterday <laughs> I went to the garden center with Karen so I have a little bit of a plant haul got a new bird bath which I wanted one for ages and I got an apple tree, a eucalyptus tree, shrub thing, and some roses. And I'll explain because I need to move the two poor hydrangea Annabelles that we have both been giving each other suffering this year. <laughs> they cause me pain, I've caused them pain. They need to move into a shadier spot. So I got two rambling, well one climbing rose and one rambling rose and I'll explain what I need to do. I also need to just tidy up the garden, lots of deadheading and cutting, lots of satisfying gardening today because I haven't been in it all weekend and it's gonna be a little bit messy, not dreadful, but all I've been doing is watering and trying to keep on top of that because we are in another hot spell in Dublin. But the good thing is about this one is the nighttime temperatures are cool. Like this morning when I got up at six, it was 12 degrees lovely and cold so the grass had that lovely dew on it and it was wet so that's why I still have some green grass although the front is getting a bit scorched and some of the back bit is getting a bit scorched but it always recovers so I don't water the grass and um, it would just be a waste of water so just watering the veg and the plants for now so let's get into it so here <laughs> here's Duffy hello <laughs> so Here's some of the bits that I bought yesterday. I'll come back to this. Oh, sounds like a seagull. Cause I want to show you the bird bath first. So I wanted one of these for ages and I was keeping an eye out. And I really wanted like a stone one or something kind of light toned. And any of the bird baths that I've seen were kind of like metal or just not the vibe. So I got this one in the Arboretum. So if you zoom in, there's like, it's like a tree trunk carved and there's like little bunnies on it and like little details. And I just thought I was so pretty. So at the moment, I just have it here um, just because I get a lot of like birds coming down from here. Um, and I caught a robin using it last night, which made me so happy. So let's see, there is a water bowl there for the hedgehog. Mm. No, he's not here today. So let me zoom in. So I don't know if you can see. This is where, like, when he's in the house, you will see his little, like, spiky bum. <laughs> he kind of rolls up into a little ball and um, he does be in there. So he might be in my neighbor's today. So. I'll see if I can get any more shots in future videos of him going in and out. So I'm loving this like nature corner and I have a bit of nature with the hedgehog and some birds visiting as well. I don't have as many insects in the houses yet. They might take a little while. So 
we shall see. It's starting to kind of get a bit warm. As you can see, I still have grass. I'm going to give it a trim. Um, it is starting to get a bit scorched in some corners, but like not as bad as what people like have been having and then the front as well. So the snapdragons looking good, nice and full. Need to do a fair bit of deadheading and then cabbage and sprouts. Sprouts are starting to get big. A few little bits of chomp but not too bad. They've definitely gotten taller. I'll probably have to stake them as well as they get bigger, but we'll see. We shall, I've never grown them before, so I'm kind of like, I'll deal with it as they're grown type thing. And I'll have some stakes free. Still lots of sunflowers. <laughs> oh Lord, the sunflowers, but they are starting to like lose their heads. But then there's more of them growing here. Like there's a new one growing and that's growing from like a broken stalk. Literally sunflowers everywhere. Here's one that broke off last night. It's like the weight of it got too much. So I just have it there and just let it dry off with the seeds. So yeah, need to just tidy up. Oh, I forgot to show you what I bought before I do the tidy up. So this is the apple tree. Sorry, I'm just keeping my voice down because I think my neighbors are in the garden. So this is the apple tree I got. It's a mini one and it grows two varieties and you don't need a second tree for it to pollinate. So remains miniature. I'm going to put it in a big pot, I think. So that's it there. And I got that in the Arboretum as well. And Karen got one as well. So interested to see. I'd say I'll get fruit off. It does say it will flower in its first year, but I'd say next year I'll actually get flowers off it. Then, eucalyptus. I wanted one of these for ages because they're always in flower bouquets that I get and they smell amazing. So I was thinking like more medicinal as well. Great for like projects, maybe like in the bathroom, like some homemade stuff, maybe at Christmas. So got one of these, love the smell of this. And then I got some chamomile and these are only like three euro each i bought three of them i have a gap just down by the pond where the grass meets and this is like a low growing chamomile it's like ground cover kind of like a grass and i'm going to plant a clump of it and then let it bleed over and spill over the edge into the stones and yeah hopefully i have some nice chamomile tea I did have some chamomile last year the year before and I killed it <laughs> some of it did seed um but I'm going to try again and not kill it this time I killed it because it was in a pot but this isn't going to be in a pot and then I have two roses back here one both of them are scented because that's a mistake I've made before of buying roses that don't have a scent so this one smells amazing and this is a rambling rose called perennial blue and that is a rambler. And then I have R Rosa, hang on, the New Dawn Climber. That's the name of that one. Now, as you can see, it's not got much kind of climbing growth on it. And I don't know what it smells like yet, but it's like a pinky one. And I'll explain later in the video where I'm gonna put those two and what I'm going to move. So. The first thing I'm going to do is just tidy up the garden, give it a little haircut, cut the grass, get my jobs done, and then I need to do some deadheading. I don't know if you can see, but I have loads of butterflies. I actually think, and they the ones that chomp on that, but there's some of them over here on that um, verbena. And I'm like, I'm noticing loads of butterflies in the past kind of week in the garden. 
if I'm out of breath, it's because I just cut the front grass. <laughs> um, I'll show you what I'm thinking to do with the hydrangeas. Actually, we'll go out and have a little look. So welcome to the front where it's a bit more crispy. I think the back is better because I have all the trees and it gives me like a bit of shade. Anyway, the plan is Pro Hydrange Annabelle is in too sunny and dry of a spot. This one isn't too bad. This will get shade in about an hour, but I've been watching the sun position on it. No wonder it's not happy. It's like held up with stakes. It doesn't have strong stems. It's in the wrong place. This is my plan. Um, am I zoomed in? I don't know. So I have rose, rose, rose. I'm gonna replace the two hydrangeas. I originally had them in there for height with climbing roses to go up the wall. And I'm gonna move hydrangeas down to this lovely shady spot. And then they will give me height. I'm thinking hydrangea Annabelle in here because actually signs of life on the geranium Remember I cut it back a couple of weeks ago? There are signs of new growth down there. These like echinaceas look a bit miserable because the geranium was taking up sunlight from them. Whereas if I put in hydrangea Annabelle on the back wall, that naturally grows up. This is a much shadier spot. Heucheras are doing well. This is a hydrangea runaway bride. Not doing amazingly, the other two hydrangeas out like the back and pots do better, but not as dead as the other ones. So this soil is more moist and less sun. So it does get a little bit of sun, but not as much as El Scorcho <laughs> up the front. I did a bit of Googling and like obviously now is not the time to move poor Hydrangea Annabelle because if she wasn't frazzled already she'll be frazzled now. Um, so we are August so it said like when they go dormant. So I'm thinking in October I'm going to make a list of things that I want to move and then move them and at least there'll be more moisture in the soil. If I was to move poor Hydrangea Annabelle now there's not enough water, it's scorching, the ground is dry, she will not be happy, she will probably die. The two roses that I got, I think I'm going to put them into just a nice pot, a bigger one than they're in, and then just put them against the fence to kind of, they're not going to do a lot of growing anyway, it's August now. Um, and I just wanted to get them while I seen them, while they were there, and I could smell them and see what they were like. Well, the purple one I can. So that is my plan for poor Hydrangea Annabelle. I think I might actually take cuttings from them. I need to go look up my girl Carol Klein because she is the cutting queen and I think I'll take Hydrangea Annabelle cuttings just in case when I transplant them. If they don't work I have a bit of insurance policy. And then that front border is more of a rose border so I'll have roses of different heights all in a similar colour palette with my ground cover on the bottom. So that's my thinking, that's my plan. One of the perks of growing these sunflowers is I got the shade. <laughs> also don't be afraid to like move things, nothing is permanent in your garden and you can give plants away to someone else or you can compost them. I feel guilty doing that because they're kind of alive but give them away, move them. Um, but obviously when they're dormant I think it's the best time to move but just go of Google. I'm a Google gardener. <laughs> so now I'm going to grab my basket. Miss Blondie is sunbathing. She always knows to keep her head in the shade though. She's smart. And yeah, I'm going to do some deadheading before moving my straw, or have strawberries that need to go runners off of strawberries. That's a job I need to do. I need to take, plant the runners in soil so I get more strawberry plants.
Okay, let's come over to the strawberry theater. <laughs> I actually have way more runners than I thought, so I just got some pots out of my stash. So what I'm gonna do is, these little runners, I'm gonna pop them into some soil, leaving them connected to the mother plant. And when they establish roots, I can cut off the runner. But I've actually got like this one alone, has like three. I've got one here. Actually, this one, look, this has roots. So that can go straight into a pot. Have I any more? Oh, look, here's a nice juicy one here. Oh, there's two on this. Oh my God. There's loads. So let's plant them up. Okay, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I reckon maybe another week or two, there's a couple more runners just starting. That's like seven free strawberry plants. So I'm gonna have to get like a bigger strawberry section next year. And actually I did quite well with the amount of strawberries that I got this year. So I was quite happy, but I'm very happy to get some new plants. So later on this evening, per hydrangea in the pot she has been doing well but you can see the whole heat is getting her I think it's 27 deg degrees celsius I don't know what that is on Fahrenheit you guys will have to work it out um so it is warmer than usual today for us so this evening everything will have to get a drinky drink including myself Miss Blondie how are you holding up in the heat <laughs> she actually loves it and I do have to make sure she gets in the shade, she has her sun cream on, you know, and then bring her inside. So even though she does be in the garden videos, she doesn't actually be outside for too long. Um, I let her get her vitamin D and then it's back inside for Queen Bee. I have a random bucket of weeds, as you can see, but I also have some random gladioli, gladioli, is that what they're called? Bulbs that I completely forgot about that are growing by themselves with no nutrition. So I'm going to tidy up this weed bucket and I'm just going to throw them in. Oh, I'm sweating again. I ain't used to this heat. That's all I can kind of do today just because it's actually getting really warm and I just am garden fatigued. <laughs> it's getting into that hot hour of the day so I'm just gonna leave the garden, do its thing and then this evening do a little bit of watering. And on that subject, um, from chatting to people in the comment section on the last couple of garden videos, a lot of you are saying your gardens have just gone to crisp. They have gone crispy and obviously there's like hose pipe bands in places and obviously like in mainland Europe, Spain, France, Italy, UK, like just droughty droughty. Ireland isn't too bad and if you just look at Ireland on the map you can see that we're kind of tucked off into a slightly cooler corner but definitely if this was to kind of continue um, we would definitely be running low on water and things like that. As of me filming this video right now, there isn't a hose pipe ban, but I am trying to use like 
the water from washing my dishes um, and things like that. So if your garden has gone to crisp, I think plants are more resilient than we give them credit to and hopefully next year they come back for you. Um, Karen was actually saying she was watching someone on I think this morning and he was like if your grass has gone crispy do not worry it will come back so yeah I have lovely <laughs> lush green grass and I kind of feel a bit guilty about it but I think it's just the trees that are out the back that give me the bit of shade. We had a bit of rain so with that first kind of intense like 30 degree weather we had we then had a period of like rain for a week which was great so things kind of recovered. So that has been the situation here. And then I was looking at the weather for like next week in the 10 days and there is some rain forecast for next week. Now, whether it comes, I don't know, but um, fingers crossed it does because the plants prefer the rainwater. So I'm gonna end it there. Um, you can check out my recent videos, new garden video on a Sunday. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. And for my regulars, cheeky thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.